Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of GLP's 10 out of 10. And today we have with us Jennifer Tipton. Uh, born in Columbus in Ohio, Jennifer graduated with a BA from Cornell University. After beginning a career as a dancer, Jennifer, Jennifer became aware of the importance of lighting in performance. She then switched direction and started studying under Thomas Skelton, eventually becoming his assistant. Designing in the disciplines of dance, opera, and theater, Jennifer has carved out an incredibly expansive and dare I say, legendary career. Her painterly lighting technique has become a trademark style and remains tethered to the very understanding of sculpting movement within a performance, interacting with both the physical and emotional elements in the most supportive of ways. In the world of opera, she has designed at the Met in New York and the Royal Opera House in London, with other recent credits, including Sir David McVicar's Electra at the Lyric in Chicago and Candide at the Clarence Brown Theatre in Knoxville. In theatre, she has been an artistic associate at both the American Repertory Theatre and the Goodman Theatre in Chicago. Jennifer's had 40 shows on Broadway, including the current production of To Kill a Mockingbird. And in the world of dance, Jennifer has been the lighting designer for the American Ballet Theatre since 1971 and is also principal designer for the Paul Taylor Dance Company. She's worked with Mikhail Baryshnikov, Jerome Robbins and Shen Wei, amongst many other choreographers. Her awards cabinet is big, having received five Drama Desk Awards, two Tony Awards, an Olivier Award, two Obie Awards, a Joseph Jefferson Award, the Jerome Robbins Prize, the Dorothy and Lillian Gish Prize, and three Bessie Awards. Jennifer is a United States Artists Gracie Fellow and a Fellow of the MacArthur Foundation, to name just a sample. And on top of all of that, she also happens to be the head of lighting design at Yale School of Drama, teaching and influencing a generation of lighting designers. Still as active as ever, Jennifer continues to push the visual boundaries of lighting design in new and exciting directions. Welcome, Jennifer Tipton. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, we have our 10 questions for you. Um, so let's uh let's go I th i'm very much looking forward to this i think this is gonna be absolutely great so um winding back you know towards the the, the beginning of your career, your career what was your first show as a designer uh it was a, a, i lit a a dancer and it was uh in virginia at a museum where everybody was telling me that i had to be I had to cut the, all the light in just to the dance. Well, of course, the dance was in the whole space. So uh, Don Redlick was the dancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I, it even got a review. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Five stars, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Um, obviously, s since then, you, you've done an amazing uh, number of shows in amazing different venues and everything like that. And, and I'm sure that, that, that most of them have all gone absolutely swimmingly well. But have there been a couple of times maybe where things didn't quite go to plan, where, where you know, there's, there was a bit of a spinal tap kind of moment? Well, um, I, I learned that, uh, you know, working on Broadway, you couldn't make any changes because all the equipment was in the shop. So you made an order and it came to the theater and that was that. Mm. And it was very expensive, of course, if you wanted to change anything. Right. So one of my early uh, productions on Broadway was Intazaki's For Colored Girls, who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. And I had heard that um, uh, black skin needed to be lit with amber light. So I chose that color and most of the rig was that color. Very, <laughs> and needless to say, it was a disaster. <laughs> it was all those beautiful skins of various tones, <laughs> all turned yellow. <laughs> so I had to change the color. Mm -hmm. And of course that was in many, many lights and it took right. a whole call and very expensive to change it. And I was mortified, but obviously it didn't keep me from continuing in lighting. <laughs> right. I think you can take all of those experiences as a, as a learning curve on the on exactly. path forward. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> one that was never to be repeated, that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, fantastic. Um, now, what would you say is the best piece of advice that anyone's ever given you, either professionally or, or otherwise? Yes, well, sort of early on, Tom Skelton hmm. said to me, no one likes a smart ass. <laughs> And I think that really, particularly a woman smart, <laughs> that really has uh, never led me astray, I should say. Right. Oh, that's that's a great piece of that's absolutely a great piece of advice for, for anybody. That'll that'll keep you working. Keep a nice team of people around you and okay. uh, and they'll stick with you, right? Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. Um, now, I, I, again, you, you've done lots of things. You've won plenty of awards uh, I, 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 and, you, you know, you teach, you've seen students, all the rest of it. What, what would you say is your proudest achievement so far? That's hard to say because there are many things that I really love. And I love working in dance. I love working in opera. Mm -hmm. I love working in theater, both large and small. And maybe in each one, there's something. It's hard, you know, maybe it's Twyla Tharp's uh, uh, In the Upper Room. Okay. With uh, music by Philip Glass. Mm. That, um, that really, they're putting, putting haze on the stage really shows what the lights do in the air right. as well as what they do on the people and the scenery. Yes. So that may, and, and that, in the upper room certainly shows that how how beautiful the rays of light are in the air as mm -hmm. well as on the stage maybe right. that's it there you go fantastic that, that was a great, a great production so one absolutely to be very proud of um now, now obviously um we've we've had various different levels of of lockdown in the past many many weeks uh and and uh uh you can find to quarters for, for some of us now um what do you normally do in your downtime when you're when you're away from the theater i guess the thing i love most to do is read okay read right. and listen to music yes yeah. right so. and just just relax and and you know switch off from uh Yes. From, well, I have been teaching, so that has kept me thinking about light a little bit. Right. I bet that's, that's had its own challenges over the past year. Trevor. Definitely. You cannot teach light without looking at it. <laughs> right. You can't, you can't really do that on a Zoom call. I guess. No, not at all. Zoom does not help. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and it certainly looks like, you know, you've got a great location uh, behind you for, for to spend some downtime at least that's that looks very pleasant uh, yes yes it's and, and great for walking too which is another good thing right to do get outside and time. get some uh, get some get some fresh air yes exactly um for our next question we we mentioned a few of the the venues that you've worked in um but do you have a particular favorite venue that you enjoy working in I would, I would say that it's the Palais Garnier in Paris, okay. or the Paris Opera Ballet. Mm -hmm. And it's such a fantastically beautiful building. Yes. And, you know, in the downtime on, on little breaks, I would love, I love walking around in that space. And I love working there. And, and the, because the stage is the right, it, well, it feels very warm and, and, mm -hmm. Comfortable. There's something about the wood itself that uh, that breathes happiness and comfort to me. Wow, it's certainly a venue with a lot of history. Yeah, um, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, and and very very beautiful indeed. Yeah, brilliant. Well, and obviously in a beautiful city as well. So it's not uh, it's well. never the worst place to be. So awesome. Um, now um, musically. Um, it, again, referring to kind of lockdown, if you were only able to have one artist or, or one particular album that, that you could keep with you and listen to, uh, who would that be? That's very a hard, very hard choice to make because having worked in opera, there are many operas that I love. Mm -hmm. But I guess if I had to choose a composer, it would be Stravinsky. Okay. He was so buried and so, uh, well, on the edge of change mm. and so always encouraging new, new ways of thinking for me. Right. right. And I'm not much of a popular music fan, so uh, I'll stick with the classics. Stick with the classics and, uh, and Stravinsky it is. 
Excellent. Fantastic choice. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. So um, now if you were able to wind the clock back and go and visit the teenage Jennifer and offer one piece of advice, uh, what would that be? Uh, you know, I had to think long and hard for that. But what I feel probably is I would say to myself, don't fret, just do the work. Right. <laughs> don't get stressed. Right. Exactly. Right. Stay calm. Everything will be all right. There you go. Right. Keep, your, keep your head back. It's easy to say that looking back. <laughs> for sure. Yes. With living it, that's not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, but no, that's a that's a, a great piece of advice for for, for anybody, uh, you know, starting out or or yeah, at any point in their career, really. Just yeah, everything will be all right. Uh, like we're feeling feeling at the moment, I feel. Yes, right, right. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, now, if you were able to sit down for uh, for a cup of coffee with any one person at all, um, either living or past, who would that be? Oh, well, I love that question because I know I would love to sit down with William Shakespeare okay. and have a cup of tea or probably <laughs> he wouldn't go for the tea. But <laughs> <laughs> always, always, whenever I get stressed or feeling that I'm out of place or I sit down and read a play of Shakespeare's and what an extraordinary human being he was. I would love to have a chat with him. Right. Yes, absolutely amazing. Uh, both his, yeah, his character, his work, uh, yeah, every, everything. Uh, absolutely incredible person. So, yes, fantastic. That's a great response. William Shakespeare will absolutely take that. Um, and then we, we, we very quickly, it comes to our final question. They seem to, they seem to fly by. Um, so once, we, uh, once we're finished with the, the, the interview, um, your phone's going to ring. And it's going to be Team USA uh, calling you up for the Olympics. Now, it could be for either the summer games or the, the winter games. Uh, but the question is, what's the, what's the sport that you compete in? What would you like to have a go at? Yes, well, this question, I'm, I'm almost 84. So this question kind of makes my body ache. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about a dream. Okay. That'll, that'll uh, I have been groupie to only one artist in my life, and that was John Curry. Okay. The ice skater. The ice dancer, yeah. The ice dancer who did uh, win the gold at mm -hmm. one point. And I also was very lucky to work with him. Okay. But, uh, so my dream is to uh, to eliminate the gravity the way uh, skating does, <laughs> right. and 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 dream of skating. Okay, that's fantastic. That is, and and, and it's it is an awesome sport to watch uh, when you get some of these people who are just uh, at the at the top of their game, and and as you say, you know, it defies gravity. Some of the the moves they can pull off. And with John, we put it on stage. Okay. And the, and the challenge for me hmm. was to show the space in some way because uh, the skaters went so beautifully and so easily uh, for so many feet. Hmm. And uh, to be able to make the audience see that and feel that, that was a challenge. Right. Yes. I guess under normal sporting conditions, they have quite let's say technical lighting where it's, it's even and it's a single color and nothing changes, nothing moves, no right. intensity. Uh, but, but of course, absolutely. Yes. If you want to turn that into a theatrical performance, it, everything, everything then changes. That must've been quite a challenge. It was, it was. And, but uh, one I loved. There you go. Always great to have a challenge. Always, always looking for something new, something fantastic. Uh, uh, Jennifer, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for finding some time for us to do this. We really appreciate it. And uh, some brilliant answers, some brilliant um, advice. And, uh, and of course, we look forward to meeting up in person uh, and hopefully not the too distant, uh, well, not too distant future. Fingers crossed. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Everything crossed. So there we are. Yes. yes. Um, thank you once again and, uh, and see you soon. And thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right,